Sometimes I like to grab a PVC pipe or stick, or as I call it, a double-sided dildo, which I made myself. It's PVC pipe, two tennis balls on each side for this amazing gripping experience. I can really get a nice finger and hand workout, improve my dexterity, but get really unique positioning, and I get myself into that really neutral position for my shoulders, okay? Look at that. Come on, I'm doing a little, little wheel, and I can push into it and actually push in and activate my chest muscles create that abduction, abduction, ADD, abduction of the pecs. But I'm showing you this because this workout, you see what happens? Like, I've never had range of motion like this in my shoulders. When it's unlocked is pain-free gains in a way I've never experienced. Yeah, I'm 40, but man, this really works. So this workout's designed to take that scapular movement through all those key angles, all right? But now we're gonna do a little bit more two arm at a time, still separating the hands are not in the ground, so we get some open chain movement to really strengthen the balances between sides and ultimately bulletproof the shoulders. Buy into this stuff, because if you want to do pull-ups and dips in a real way, this is the stuff you have to have as the bricks to build on top of that. I'm asking you to start in a get-up, because that's actually how I want you to set up to do external rotations. And I see this exercise done, and I was there too, especially as a young idiot, really stiff, like really rigid with it, but what you want to do is kind of really drive the knee out and get as much flexion in the hip and ankle as you can, and then use that elbow to push that hip away. Now I've got full protraction of the shoulder blades, I'm locked in, inhale down, and when I'm here too, like, have some fun, mess around. You've got that ability to really drive the elbow up and get a unique rowing angle using the leverage or sliding action of the elbow, but anyway, we're just gonna burn out the external rotators. You can really never do inhale down enough of these and try to really get some range of motion, but start light. Start with a fist or a soup can. I'm using a five, this is plenty. I'm not the smallest guy in the world. I'm 40 and old as fuck, but I'm not the smallest guy in the world. And this five pound dumbbell is testing me in terms of sustained contraction and range of motion in a way if I went 10 or 15 or 20 and I was, I'm gonna blow out these small muscles. These are small muscles. These are small muscles. Okay, leave them alone. Go slow, go light, go full range of motion and focus on contraction. And we can also do this with a band. So I'll give you an option. I don't know if you have access to a band for this particular workout. You just select a dumbbell workout, whatever else. But take the band, get it just about fist tight with the arm bent at 90 degrees, okay? So look, you can even start like this so you know that you get full range. Just come in, set, exhale all the way out, and pin that elbow tight to the oblique or love handle area, and heel back. And again, focus on as much range of motion. Drive the elbow into the hip and kind of push away and just just swivel, get that elbow right into that hip pelvic crest right here, right, right above the pelvis, and just swivel and dig into it. You can go slow in the beginning, then mix in some faster reps without losing your shoulder positioning. And obviously we're gonna do both sides because we're fixing the balances between sides. We're taking those one-arm row shrugs, and here we go. Hinge at the hips, and again, don't round that spine. Retract those shoulder blades, and create a nice little natural arc in the back. Get those hips back. Ooh, I'm gonna make a nice little wiggle. Come back down, get set, all right? What I'm gonna do here is the one arm scap row now with two arms, but from a bent row position, sit back into the hips, feel the stretch of the, the you know, glutes and hams, but also activate the glutes and hams to protect that low back. Inhale down, moving only through the shoulder girdle. Those scapula just winging out to the side. <sighs> Exhale back up like you would begin a row. And we're going two of those bad boys, <sighs> and then <sighs> and exhale up, inhale down and do one row. All right, now if that's tough, it is tough in the lower back for extended time. You know, if you haven't done this before, 15 to 30 seconds in the beginning, and there's a self-assistance option, but also a way, in my opinion, to get more muscle activation. So that can be the head of the incline bench at seat up to about here, maybe recline 75 degrees. It could be a dip bar, anything like a power rack, rail, whatever you got. I'm gonna hinge back at the hips. And now look, see, in free space, if I don't have the right position, see that position? Now I can rest here because I've created some freedom for my body where I can round the spine, right? I can do that. Now this would blow out some people's backs. This would blow out my back if I just picked up these weights and didn't warm up like I have been shooting all day. <laughs> Look at this. I am soaked, all right? Just dripping. But I get locked in, and now I can get in better position here by pressing my forehead and also strengthening my neck, by the way. And now right here, if I was in free space, Watch that, it's about the best I can do when I get here. Look at that, the extra lift and pull, I just get such leverage here, right? So that's why we're using it, not just to pressure up the low back, but also to maximize the training effect. I think it's a pretty good combination, you're welcome. All right, 
Now we're doing the reverse of that, the horizontal push or scapular protraction, targeting the stratus anterior muscles. We show this on the floor with one arm, we're going the two arm version, but I'm gonna show this with, what's called, it's called, what is this called? I forget what it's called, it's from Dynamax, it's a slog, it's like a, it's like a log, anyway, but you can see it's like a giant foam roller in this effect for this exercise, which allows me to wrap my scapula around and really get more range of motion through it. Use a floor if you need, but it's a little uncomfortable and you don't get as much motion and you can modify with a really sturdy foam roller just to get a little bit of that extra thoracic extension. And I like to put the middle of the skull resting at the edge of whatever I'm using, okay? So from here, on the way down, inhale and then try to wrap the scapula around the cylinder and then push your scapula away as far as you can. Like, think about not just knuckling, press through the palms. I don't recommend keeping the fingers open like this, especially if you're new to this exercise, I'm doing this a long time. I like to open them up because if I press through the palm, I get more pec activation and more overall motion, all right? But I go, inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. Really push away and really wrap on the cylinder. Of course, modify with the floor press, how to get out of this. Just try to get into this position. Keep your abs tight. You never want to get hurt on the accent, all right? And just do a slow hammer curl down. You're good. And then we come up, ready to rock. Nothing wrong with hitting the upper traps. It is an area that is prone to tension and cause tension headaches and creates this kind of rise when they're too tight and don't have enough range of motion through them. So start light on this. Focus on range of motion. The key here is you can't have the weights resting here. You got to think about being totally erect. Drive the knees underground. Push the hips forward and squeeze the glutes and then crunch the abs and pull the ribs and shoulders down. I'm locked in, I'm ready to go. And don't rest in here, kind of pull them away a bit. Exhale up, pull them up there and don't just do these fast. No, no, you gotta contract for a couple seconds. After you fully exhaled, inhale back down and watch the difference. Take that there, now watch. Push away, so you can stretch them too. Contract the shit out of them but then stretch the hell out of them at the bottom, okay? But keep your abs engaged and tight as well. That one, you're gonna get such a good pump to work and grip form. Look at this, I get so much time under tension, but again, targeting this area in particular, it's really a full body movement, especially for extended time under tensions. Get ready. All right, so now we got the overhead shrug with two arms, the beta scapula and upper traps too, but really working that scapula elevation and depression, really tough to get the arms overhead. Like if you wanna do any overhead stuff, pull-ups, uh, handstand push-ups, uh, snatches, presses, overhead presses. You gotta really get the arms fully overhead. If you can't get enough shoulder flexion, what happens? Boom, hyperextension. So we get into a split stance here. We root ourselves down. I like to put a little slant board or pad to extend the range of motion of it. It actually allows me to get more complete like that. So if I was on the floor, I'd be like this. Because I'm here in this slight angle, I can push through the back toe, drive the hip forward. Now, the stretch in the, in the iliacus area here up into the psoas, especially if I add the arms overhead like I'm here. And we did this in the previous month on the opposite arm, you know, one at a time with the weight we use. Now, whatever weight you use, I want you to cut that weight in half because it's much harder to do two hands at a time. So I used a 10 on this. Look, I can press, I can press some weight, but a 10 was the only load I could use without sacrificing form. And again, these are small muscles. They don't need big loads. In fact, if you use big loads, you hurt your body. So we lock in, go one arm at a time to set yourself and then Root and push, you can push the palms away. Exhale up, shoulders to ears, inhale back down. Small movement. And again, at about rep three, it starts to improve because you just get a little more motion each time. It's, this is micro, a micro movement with major gains. Because if I can just relax my arms in this position and get my hips underneath my shoulders, this is lightweight. When I can't and I'm off balance, I have to yank into my low back. So respect this exercise. It's gonna change the game for your shoulders. It's gonna unlock the key to some serious muscle growth and injury prevention. So uh, I used fives and that was plenty. Start with two and a half, so you can go soup cans, peanut butter jars, uh, or just go fists. But I like to actually squeeze something in the hands because we get more activation, all right? And you actually get more dexterity. These are important. All right, baby, we're in the you know, you go one way, you gotta go the other. So now we're doing the row shrug, two to one shrug to inverted row. And again, in terms of hand position, no one talks about this, right? But I like to first take the, the web of the hand there, pin in, wrap the palm, and then wrap the fingers and get a really secure grip. Now, if you find you're using your elbow flexors too much, okay? I like to actually take the thumb, go there, and even wrap around and just 
it makes me use my back more and less of my arms, okay? So we lock in, but again, start with a secure grip before you get to this position until you know this exercise. You do a glute bridge, all right? That's, you know this movement, we do it. Lock up, pull down, and again, don't just get here. See, that's okay, but see how I kind of retract and almost recline my body? Now I'm ready to go, almost like I'm getting slightly inverted. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, I don't lose that hip extension either. And then I'm gonna do a row. From that deep stretch position, I'm gonna drive my hips up and really get the contraction I'm looking for. Works the entire backside of the body. Is it your butt? Is it your hamstrings? Is it your entire spinal muscles? Yeah, it's all of it, enjoy. All right, I recommend parallel bars for this or you can use a pair of dumbbells but I like a neutral grip here. And again, I'm just showing you what this really allows me to do. I get, I get a crazy pack stretch and little pump. I'll get you here. Don't worry, I'll get you here where I can talk and just like literally talk and have a conversation in this position without destroying my shoulder and actually feeling good, all right? Because I started here and I did two to one scat push-up to regular push-up or push-up shrug. So palms in, I like to do this with the fingers open. Don't do that until you master it with the hands closed, but better palm, better pec activation but make fists to start and secure yourself. Inhale down, arms straight, exhale up and round that upper back. Again, neutral grip, I can even kinda, while I'm down there, kinda move side to side, really push away, and then inhale down, stretch I'm getting here. But I have a shoulder foundation. Before I did all these exercises, this would've blown me out. All right, come back up, and again, two push-up shrugs, one push-up, four time. Come to the knees when you need to, okay? Or modify a really high incline step or bench. Uh, make it work for yourself, a dip bar, high dip bar. People forget about this. Your dip bar can also be used for these movements. And look, see how much more range of motion I get because how light it is? So I can even back off to this or just start feeling the movement here first before I, see what, I can just really move around and I can stretch here. So again, don't be afraid to use these high parallel bars too. Both of these, uh, have been really the key to the upper body gains I've experienced, including the pull-up bar. Those three, man, spending time hanging in the dip support and in the push-up support for time and moving around, game changer. And this is gonna blow up the chest for big extended time under tensions. Ooh, maybe. Between takes, we were trying to find the, you know, you gotta find the light, guys. And when you really mobilize the scapula, the flexing is gonna be out of this. That's where you get the, you know, that extra, you get here, right? You can see this even through my sleeveless hoodie versus here. So the range of motion is gonna make you look fierce. And we're gonna finish it off here in terms of the back with the two to one pull up shrug to pull up. All right, grip wise, you are strongest underhand, maximum biceps recruitment. You are in the most neutral, safe, joint friendly position, palm spacing hammer grip. And that's also gonna like to grip like this instead of here, because again, I'll use more back if I go just four fingers wrapped than I will if I get with the thumb. The thumb makes me want to go here, all right? And the fingers make me want to go here, and that's where we're trying to work. So I get locked in, and I like to do this again. Um, you can even start self-assisted, at least on the stretching portion, toes here, if I'm using a door pull-up bar, but full stretch, exhale, and then pull back. You know, you can start with just a basic up-down, that's fine, that's where you begin, but then try to every rep, just pull back a little bit more, and really get that stack, scapular retraction, depression going. Two of those, and then pull up. All right, and then I can do this. Exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, inhale down. All right, man, there's no other exercise on the planet that makes you feel like nothing can stop you than a pull up. It's also the hardest. It's all your body weight. It's everything you carry in life got to use to pull up. Once you can do it, nothing can stop you. And it's not just because I just took an edible. Just warming up for this particular exercise. But here's another great option with that dip support to get the hips going. But I get into this position, two to one dip shrug to dip, okay? Again, I like that palm focus to get the pecs max out and really get that full depression of the scapula, right? This is what you're working here. And it's when I self-assist, you know, you can start to, and about rep, you know, rep one might be tough. You gotta swivel around, move around. Really focus on the breathing aspect, right? Inhale in, fully exhale, and then push away. All right, so we start self-assisted. Shoulders to the ears, go turtle head. 
and then push away and almost like drive the toes into the ground, right? And then we do our inhale down, it's sweaty, <sighs> exhale up. And you notice when I'm here, look at that, from the side, vertical forearm position, all right? From the side, come on over here, show me some love, all right? So we don't wanna be here, I wanna get nice and proud chest. Now, doing this is much harder, obviously, if we go into full dip support, but it's gonna chisel the entire upper body. Ooh, why not? Why not, little baby? You'll get there. Ooh, we these chesticles be sizzling. Get ready for a great workout today. We're gonna get some gains. Make your post workout report in the comment section below. You're done in 20 minutes. Get after it. Love you guys. Peace. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest.
Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway.
rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go.
halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. 